I'm Larry Rosen. Uh, I was a television writer producer for 35 years. Did shows like The Partridge Family and The Mike Douglas Show before that. But 17 years ago, I decided to uh, change careers, and I became a PA. And that's not a production assistant, that's a physician assistant. And I've actually never looked back. When I was in high school, 15 years old, I wanted to be a gynecologist. Of course, I think every 15-year-old boy in the 50s wanted to be a gynecologist. So in 1953, I went to the University of Michigan as a pre-med student. Was scared off of it by some of my friends that were up there. I'd gotten involved in a fraternity house, and I was a social chairman. I said, no, I don't think this is going to work. Somebody took me, I don't know how I got there, but I wound up at the TV office in the University of Michigan. I had show business all around me, and uh, I walked in there, and it was like, hey, I think I belong here. And from there, graduated, uh, went to New York and met somebody from Westinghouse Broadcasting who was looking for personnel for a show called The Mike Douglas Show, and that took off for six years. I mean, I, I did a, a, a week of shows with Betty Davis once on The Mike Douglas Show, and I was uh, such a fan of hers. And about 1966 or 5, she did a movie called The Nanny. He says, you're going to get her for one day to promote the movie. There's a story about Betty Davis. She was having dinner at Lorette Taylor's father's house, and she was the only woman in the room, and the father stood up and he made a toast to America's greatest living actress. And he said, to my daughter, Lorette Taylor. And she was mortified because everybody thought it was her. So said, we have Gloria DeHaven coming on the show. Same day, Betty's going to be there. I said, what if we had her tell that story? Later on the show, we do the same thing to her make her think she's going to get an award from the city of Philadelphia, and we give it to Gloria DeHaven and do the same thing. And Mike said, I don't know if we can do this with Betty Davis. I said, what do we got to lose? So she came in the next morning. I remember somebody telling me, she's downstairs in the studio. I walked out, and she's sitting there with the cigarette and the dark glasses. It scared the hell out of me, you know, but I, we started to yeah. talk. And I said, and that story about Lorette Taylor, oh, yeah, yeah, that happened. I said, well, we got an audience of 200 women. They would just love that. It's such a real honest, personal, human thing that she did. She says, all right, I'll tell the story. And we got her, you know. We do this, the, the interview. Now I want you to step out here, Betty, because the city of Philadelphia wants to present an award. And he said, this award is presented. And he said to Miss Gloria DeHaven, and doors opened up, and Gloria came running out. The audience screamed. Betty Davis, she slammed the table. She said, I did it again. I did it again. She said, who the hell thought that up? We were all hiding behind cameras. We went to the commercial, and uh, they pushed me out in front. And she said, it was his idea. And she took me aside. She said, young man, nobody's ever done a practical joke like that on me. She says, you want me back for a week? Anytime you want, I'll be here. So years later, I was working for Dick Clark in my last job in show business. I had some knee surgery done, and when I went into rehab, there was a guy that had this PAC written on his chest. And I said, what does that stand for? He says, it's physician assistant certified. I said, I went to school for two and a half years. I assisted at your surgery. I said, oh, my God. I said, are you kidding? There's something like that, huh? Dick and I tried to get a show on the air. We almost did, but we didn't succeed. So then I was out of work for two years. And I said, well, do I want to knock on doors and try to be a writer, or do I think maybe I have an opportunity to do a dream that I always wanted? And I took my boards in August, and I got my job in July. And during that time, it suddenly occurred to me that and if I don't pass this exam, where am I? You know, I have no place to go. So I pulled into the nearest synagogue I could find. I sat there alone one morning, and I made all these deals with God. I said, just let me pass this thing. And I passed with honors. And uh, my deal with God was pretty good. I kept most of my promises with him. Well, people always ask me why I became a PA. You know, they said, uh, was it to help people? And I said, no. no. I love the science. I love the medicine. I love the excitement of the emergency room. But when you get into it and you really actually start helping people, it's very, it's very infectious. And, and I, I draw a lot of similarities between medicine and show business. Well, I, I love actors. Actors carried our good water and our bad water. If a script was lousy, they had to do it. So now I'm in medicine. You know, ironically, prescriptions that we write are called scripts in medicine. The patients come in, they're just as challenging, they're just as creative, 
as the industry was. You know, you never know what's going to walk in that door. We see a lot of colds and runny noses in family practice, but you always, you don't want to miss that meningitis or that pneumonia. So an actor doesn't learn his lines or he's late all the time on the set. I had the same problem with the diabetic who doesn't take his medicine. My colleagues voted me PA of the decade. They gave me this beautiful plaque on the wall, you know I mean? They're wonderful things that come to you if you reach out because you're needed in any field that, you're, that, that you love. I would advise people who might be thinking of changing careers or have a dream that they haven't done, just do it. Just do it, don't think too long about it, just go do it. <laughs>